Hello my soccer universe for the first review video of 23-24 for the Austrian Bundesliga in particular and for the entirety of the season in general. Um, if you have missed it, I already published a preview for the Austrian Bundesliga season. You can see that one up there and also for the very first game since I was there and I needed to get it all off. Lusk's very very lucky 1-1 draw to open the 50th Bundesliga season. With Rapid, I also made a video about that one already, so this will not be the focus of this video. We just focus on things in general for this Austrian Bundesliga first round, a round which clearly separated already the two top teams from the rest. I would say it also kind of that demonstrated that being promoted is not always easy when you get in, because it has been easy in the Austrian Bundesliga for promoted teams. Blavis Linz were a little bit struggling, to be honest. But the main story at the moment is what's happening at Red Bull Salzburg, uh, mainly because it should all be chaos at this club. A lot of upheaval in the front office and in the club leadership. And I think it will have no bearing because the, uh, the club is calmly weathering the storm, making the necessary changes and renewing themselves, which is what they've been doing for the squad in general over the years. I think they can also do this at the executive level. I'm talking, of course, I mentioned already uh, in the um, uh, preview video and also a little bit in the repeat video uh, uh, of that, that um, Christoph Freund is leaving Salzburg, sporting director for many years. He turned Salzburg more or less into this money-making machine where you get uh, young talent for a low price and then sell it on and with sell-on fees and so on you make adi additional money. Prime example of course being uh, early Holland but you know also the likes of Sadio Mane and so on are in there who all came through Salzburg and he basically made this model that now not only uh, in Europe are, ma are many trying to em emulate uh, also in Austria this is hap happening namely also at my club Lusk they're trying to run a similar model. He is leaving, and he's leaving for Bayern Munich. When he turned down Chelsea a year ago, uh, it was kind of a little bit... Everyone thought of it as a joke from every point of view. Why would an Austrian go uh, be even considered for the Premier League? Um, that doesn't make much sense. That he's getting another Bayern Munich job. It's one of the most coveted jobs and most uh, uh, high-profile jobs that he gave, especially when you're sitting here in Aust Austria. Definitely shows that he is highly rated in the footballing world in general. But it did not stop there. Uh, during the past week, you heard some rumors or already. There was an interview of my coach, Matthias Jaisli, who said, yeah, you know, losing someone that you worked so closely together, you built some trust up. It's kind of a little bit of a blow. Then some rumors spread that he's contacted by Al Ahli from Saudi Arabia. And wouldn't you know it, on Friday he is let go by Red Bull Salzburg because they say he cannot focus on preparing for a game. And they just said, let the other staff take over for that first game. And the Eisler duly signed a uh, contract with Al Ahli in Saudi Arabia, which is also another one of those where I don't know really what to say. Of course, the money that's thrown around. I guess it makes it a little bit easier to go into the desert despite all the other things. And so even in that game, there was a we'll talk about that. There was a little storm but Salzburg where they did rather calmly. And then they said they're gonna take the time. Of course their top two can candidates, at least that was rumored in, in the press with Oliver Glass and Ralf Rashüttel both said nah uh, going back to Austria is not the right step for our career. So they said they presented on this morning the one candidate that everyone actually thought anyway that this is the I, this is the logical candidate, potentially even the ideal candidate. Uh, the first Salz Red Bull Salzburg coach is actually from Salzburg itself. I grew up in Kuchli, which is nearby, um, who had been at the academy, had been a player for uh, the. Austria Salzburg kind of in this predecessor form, more of them a little bit later as well. And yeah, it's Gerhard Strober, who had been at the Red Bull and in New York as, as well. He knows the identity and I think it is just the perfect appointment for Salzburg at this point in time. And another one, you know, 
the one thing as much as you may like and dislike them and there will be a video coming on Red Bull Salzburg uh, you know when Lask is playing them later this year um, as much as you may dislike them I admire the way they calmly go about their business and find usually good solutions that don't upset the apple cart all too much I don't expect anything but in the brilliant Salzburg season again it's as simply as that but let's talk about the other games in the Austrian Bundesliga. It actually was quite an entertaining Saturday uh, slate of games, especially the early ones, uh, starting in Hartberg against Lulusna, a game that kind of, you know, early signs, potential relegation strategy, may, may, maybe not. Hartberg completely dominated the game, had an easy uh, tunnel lead in the 48th minute through Entrup. Um, uh, Dierkate giving the first, first goal, then Frederikus pulls one back for Lusna out of nowhere. They get a giveaway penalty, it's 2-2, and then Sangare is sent off with a red card. They completely imploded there. This is a game that Hartberg should have won, because for most of the time, they were the absolute better team. Lusna a little bit stealing a point, but you know, if you make up two goals, you actually earned that one as well. It was also a good afternoon for the two teams from Kenton, Corinthia, if you like. Uh, Klagenfurt, a team that is very much underestimated and under underappreciated. They got promoted and twice made it into the top six and still they're not considered a top six team. Well, they went to Tirol, a team that everyone thinks they could pu push for a little bit more, and won 3-1 and totally deserved that, with Andy Irving from Scotland uh, scoring two, the second and the third, and assisting the first one, being the man of the match. Maybe when Kronberger pulled one back, it could have been a little bit tighter, but overall it was a really, really easy win for Klagenfurt and Andy Irving. That's uh, that's how you start a season. As I said, the other, other team from Kärnten, not from the capital Klagenfurt, but from Wolfsburg, also got a uh, win. Also relatively easy, especially for, for the first 60 minutes. They were so much better than blau -Weiss. Linz, newly promoted, with lots of ambition, found themselves already four minutes down in a big uh, hole, 1-0 through uh, Tayo Bayo who actually grew up in Linz, which I think is a little bit ironic. Um, and then they pick up yellow cards for for all defensive players so make their life even harder and there had to be changes made already at halftime Avatayo Balo uh, scores a second one in the 51st and it was cruising but then Wolfsburg led up kind of went one way to get the uh, game done Blauweiss came up had a few chances and actually got the first Bundesliga goal through Pirke, uh 2-1, which makes it a whole lot tighter than it actually was. More on Blavas coming next week when the derby is coming up. Uh, I will do a video on the Linz derby for sure. Then, as I already said, Altach had two chances. One that was actually pretty good, where, but if you, do, you have to hit the goal. But if you don't make those chances against Salzburg, you're gonna lose. And with the first real chance, I mean, they controlled the game. They were full in control of, 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 of the game. Didn't create many chances, but the first chance that again to Konate, to Radkov, newly bought ser ser serving striker, heads it in from a short distance because the strike, uh, the defender was just looking at the ball and not at the striker. And then uh, in the second half early, it was a Kiagat corner, Pavlovic, another Serbian, this time a defender, heads, heads it in, it's 2-0, and there was no way for Altach to come back. And Altach is a team that hopes to have a little bit of an easier season this time around. Not this way. Uh, if you make such uh, easy mistakes, you need to up your game. Fortunately enough, this was the hardest opponent that you had. And also a pretty impressive performance by Sturm Graz going to Austria Vienna and just flattening them 3-0. Uh, fully deservedly so. It could have been even more. I started early on when Gazi Begovic uh, yanks one eat from the, the corner of, of the box in, into the near corner. Yes, Goli Fruchtel from Austria Vienna did not look uh, that great, but this was a rocket. But the game turned on a red card for uh, Marvin Martins, who, you know, it was a ball in, in the air where Pras wants to chase through to get, get, get the ball. He gets it first and Martins with uh, his foot. He didn't want to go for the ball, but he hits him right in the head. Clear red card, unfortunately, for him. And then to a few minutes later, Vlodarczyk, a new tall striker for Sturm Graz, makes it 2-0 to uh, underline the absolute dominance that Sturm Graz had in a game. And then after the break, it's 3-0 uh, through Affengruber. There's nothing really coming from Austria Vienna, to, to be honest. Who, of course, I may have more focused on facing Banja Luka at the moment. 
So those were the, the, the results, which also lead to the first table, you know, not much there. Let's look at, at, at the other side where we see the uh, expected regular season standings. And you already see in the preview, it was a little bit clear. Now it's a little bit clear. Lusk is not quite yet there, unfortunately. And it hurts a little bit to say for me, but I think Salzburg and Sturm are much, much better than Lusk is the two Vienna teams in that group for now. I really hope there's change. I don't see it really. Wolfsburg actually making a top six, but Klagenfurt, this could be a tight battle there as well. And we have, have to see how it develops on the bottle, bottom, not the bottle. And we also see the expected final uh, sta standings, you know, when we have the, sep the separation. Uh, very similar uh, changes there. I'll give you also the uh, fixtures for the next two rounds. Uh, the next round, I mean, the big one, Sturm Graz against Lasko. The way Sturm Graz played and the way Lask played, I expect is to be, unfortunately, rather one-sided and it's not for my team. Expect a rather deflated uh, video next time around, but I also want to point out the, uh, the derby in Klagenfurt between the two Corinthian teams. That could be an interesting one. The potential decider, pre-decider already for the top six. Same goes for the game. First home game for blau weiss Linz against Hartberg, which is also a little bit of decider for uh, who might go down. Is Hart Hartberg really relegation candidate? Is, is blau -Weiss? That's a big one right there. Two. And then the week after, yeah, it is the Derby in Linz. And I will definitely make a, a video before that. Sturm against Klagenfurt could be an interesting one too. Note that between the two Sturm home games, Sturm have to go to Eindhoven for the Champions League qualification. So that might be a tough one there as well as at the Dor Dor Derby in Linz. And then uh, Bundesliga Classic, but you know, it will be one sided between Salzburg and Austria Vienna. I want to finish with the cup where you see already the cup round, the first cup round, which was happening uh, uh, more than a week ago. But we had already a draw for the next round, and what a brilliant draw! I mean, all the top teams got third league opponents, but look at the first one: Austria Salzburg against Red Bull Salzburg. That is dicey and spicy, and I am thinking before that cup round, I need to make a video on these two because that one has everyone excited. To be honest, I don't know where this will be played. I also don't know that. So uh, that will be interesting. And then we have Ried against Wolfsburg. Ried got uh, relegated, so I think that's interesting. And don't overlook Leoben against Tirol. Uh, you might know the coach of Leoben, which is one Carsten Janker from uh, Bayern Munich, Germany, and also Rapid fame. And Leoben have been getting a lot of money uh, put in. Also, first Vienna, the oldest team in Austria, playing Austria Lustena. I think could also be an interesting one. So yeah, that's it from me. What did you think about the, fir the first results in the Austrian Bund Bund Bundesliga? Uh, what do you think about uh, Salzburg's calm weathering of the storm? Any case, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I'll talk to you soon more about Austrian soccer. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and plays that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my Soccer Universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.